Go ahead, California. California. Is that Craig in California? Uh, hello. Do you want to ask Joel a question? Who is it? Joel in California. Okay, go ahead, Joel. Did you have a question for Dean? Yeah, he's uh, pretty much been answering them, though. But, uh, Dean, uh, how has uh, all of this uh, new contracting uh, helped you out with your own construction business? And, um, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, uh, arguing about the taxes with the government, I'm sure it's been able to help you out with just contracting in general with the other public and other private citizens in your contracting business. I would have to say it was actually the opposite. I think it was my, you know, I think it was my comprehension of contract law from construction that helped me deconstruct what's going on with the legal person. And since uh, since I really really kicked this into high gear last year, uh, my my construction company has suffered <laughs> horrendously oh. as I spend 16 hours a day doing this stuff now uh, with with almost no money coming in because it's just become a, an all-consuming passion, right? Well, so, but but basically because you're just lacking uh, time towards your business because you're focusing it on this. Instead. Yeah, and, and even interest. i got to tell you, I get fired up about this. I don't know if it's the, the mass awakening that's going on around the planet or what's going on, but I just I get right fired up about this stuff, and that's why some, some of the interviews I get ta 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 talking with people there, I'll just get swearing and just get right worked up about things. And I do the same thing in the courtroom too, right? Uh, you got to understand a belligerent claimant is going to have his claim heard more so than anybody else. And, uh, yeah, so, so my contract experience from contracting is actually what helped me break down what's going on with the person. I see. Yeah. I, I, see. Uh, I, I At some point here, i got to start picking my work back up here and uh, getting that kind of part of my life uh, back on order. But uh, in the meantime, I'm uh, kind of going with the momentum that's taken over here since putting a couple of these little private lessons online. Like, we, we, I hope everybody understands, uh, we were not expecting any of this. We had a, uh, I got tired of there being no action where I live. Uh, nobody was doing anything, nobody was learning, no one was doing their own research. So I decided, well, I'm going to grab this group of Freeman guys here in Winnipeg and I'm going to start teaching them some stuff to see what happens. We recorded our first, our first class, somebody put it online, and here we are like five, six weeks later talking with people on, uh, on the Internet because we got like 87,000 combined views on the Internet now. It's just been oh, ridiculous. Do you know who sent me the link to your video? Do you no. know Robert Fox? No. You don't know Robert Fox? Oh, he's no. a legend here in the United States. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that would be flattering to me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, I can relate to what you're saying, though, because it's an obsession. It becomes an outright obsession. I've been doing it for 10 years, and yeah. it doesn't stop. No, it doesn't. You you, you could never it's go like back to It's like you're cramming. It. You're cramming for some great test that's going to be given at the end. I always say that. Yeah, you, 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 you couldn't go back to living the life of a, of a slave even if you were forced to. They'd actually have to kill you because you'd always feel like you were just being put back in a cage. Right. So, and I think that's even more important than us than really, really cracking the code of what's going on. Really, people just have to wake up and realize uh, that, that at some point here we just got to leave the government behind and just discard them because they're not I relevant Take responsibility. Anymore. Take responsibility, take responsibility for, for yourself. Start creating our own communities and our own infrastructure and our own businesses and uh, just, just, just leave these people. Everybody, uh, one of the things I, I, I wanted to talk about in one of the upcoming videos, I think, is that everybody wants this solution that they think is going to give them this uh, unlimited checkbook where they can just go out and buy all these fancy cars and mansions and they got all this, these billions of dollars in these secret accounts the government's keeping. No, that's all nonsense. When you really understand what's going on, uh, you'll know enough to realize that it's not your game. It was created to suck you in and suck you dry. It wasn't created to give you everything you're ever going to need in life. Are you familiar with the Amish people? Yes. They have a real good method. They sh they have a thing called shunning. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know? and, I, and I, you know, I'm trying to create a new, um, what is it, um, what do you call it, sound bite, where I, the, the, the federal government is no longer relevant. I repeat it often. And I, you know, we have to create our own sound bites. All the masses out there speaking sound bites. We have to create our own sound bites. Sort to drum it into them, you know, things to make them think. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the, the government needs us because where, where, it's, where it sits right now, because they're broken, they're bankrupt, and they exist on fiat currency, and we are the creditors of the nation. 
Uh, this is really relevant for you guys all down the states is what a lot of people, uh, Americans, don't realize is when, the, when the, the government talks about how much money they owe, the federal government owes all this money, and they try to convince the American people they owe all this money. No, no, no. The American government owes all that money, and they owe it to you. Right. You're the creditor of the American government, not the Chinese. Nobody else on this planet, that's a, that's a, it's a, a retarded topic they try to bring up, that, oh, look at all this money we owe the Chinese. No, 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 no. The American government right. owes everything to the American people. That debt is owed to you guys. Yeah. So I raised that point uh, recently in Canada, too, where I said, well, how hard is it to go into a courtroom? And uh, if you're up against CRA in the Canada, in the United States, it would be the IRS. If you're up against the IRS and you just raise the point just saying, well, hey, all this money that the American government owes that you're claiming to collect taxes to pay off, do they not owe it to the people? And if they owe it to the people, then why are you trying to collect off me? I am the people. Why are you collecting off me to pay me? I don't think the IRS's case is going to go too much further against you. Okay, California, is that good for you? It's good for me. Uh, yeah. All right. I know, gonna... except for value, definitely works. I've been able to discharge uh, all my taxes, no problem. Yeah, just once or multiple times? Um, I've had uh, multiple accounts. Uh, I did some basic A for Vs uh, with uh, several other accounts, but the ones that just never, ever bothered me ever again was the uh, the federal taxes and the state taxes. But yes. on some of the private corporations, they sent back my uh, A for Vs saying they don't accept this type of payment. Yeah. But they knew they knew to extend it right back because if they had kept it, then offer they an ex- had... Offer an acceptance. Then yeah. they accepted it, but that was very interesting to me on how that worked, and you know, I felt a sense of relief. I said, oh, "Okay, so the government completely understands this." Yeah, so well, it's just a matter of is, uh, with a private uh, corporation, that's a little bit different. But with the, with the government, you can discharge any obligations against them. That's why the AFB works for them, and the signature is really all you need. You just have to write accepted on it. But if accepted for value works, great. Uh, we have a much tougher time in Canada. The government doesn't do anything. They send everything back or they ignore it altogether. They keep it. Uh, they don't credit any accounts. Keep coming after people in the courts. It's brutal up here. You guys have it a lot easier than we do. Uh, with the private corporations, you may want to try sending them a, a promissory note instead. Instead of just AFVing a bill, you might want to try sending them a promissory note because that's something they can convert to cash through the bank. No, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I was just testing to see what would happen and uh, tried it with uh, some of the utility bills. But uh, I just found out how interesting it was that, you know, they knew to send it back. Oh, yeah. You know, because if you if you accepted it, they were going to keep it. But they send it back just as quick as I send it to them. Yeah, and it like was registered within 72 mail. 72 hours. Sure. Yeah, well, as soon as they received it, yeah, they had called me and sent it back. And really nicely said, we don't accept this form of payment. Please send a different Form. What we do accept is, and then they asked what they wanted. You know, they wanted cash, check, or something else. But they were playing the game, you know, to the T. Well, this is simple. Then you can look up the definition of cash, mm-hmm. and that, and and by law, and you'll be able to find it in the American law books uh, because they're bankrupt. A promise to pay is cash. Yeah, and send so it back to them, and then they'll have to discharge it. So send in that definition, and I'm sure you can probably find some court sites down there as well about how a uh, promise to pay is, is payment, that is cash. Send them those definitions and send them a promissory note and say, at, at, at your request, here's your cash. Yeah. Yeah, that's if you want to go to If you want to go to court and contest that this is cash, be my guest. Yeah. Uh, I didn't take it that far. I was in test mode. And yeah. just see what happened. And, <laughs> and I definitely, I just wanted to see if it was going to be accepted or not. Then I went ahead and sent the payment. But, you know, you've got to test this stuff out for yourself to make, you know, so that you can, you can see for yourself, you know, just listening to YouTube videos. You don't want to go off of that. But when you see what works and what doesn't, then you actually know because you've experienced it. Yeah. You know, firsthand knowledge. So, um very interesting and it's definitely true and it's definitely working for me so That's you know i thank you and i appreciate it all right we've got 20 people in line let's go are well, we we'll try to go quicker with these then <laughs> is that it for you california yes it is thank you very much thank you i won't go off on any more tangents we'll just keep the oh it's all right the answers here we'll stay on as long as you like <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going anywhere all right let's go ahead to um, Alpha, Alpha 99, go ahead. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? 
Yeah, Dean, how you doing? Not too bad, yourself? Good, good. I, I did listen to your, uh, your tutorials and whatnot uh, a, a couple weeks ago now. And one, in one of them, you mentioned you were talking about your brother going to court. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like to use his as an, as an example all the time, and he might even be listening tonight. So. Well, that's good. Hi to your brother. Um, I have a, a similar issue. I have a family matter, and what happened is I, I, uh, I didn't attend the first court appearance, so custody was handed to my ex-wife. Also, certain de- you know legal determinations were made. And uh, I want there's some a number of things that layer onto that. But what what I want to ask you, the question I want to ask you is, how do I go back and uh, revisit that? To you know, with the knowledge that I have now, I mean, I've been picking up a lot of information from everywhere. I listen to UKD regularly, and of course, I went through all your stuff. What is your? I don't know what your brother's circumstances. I don't know if he caught it on the first court appearance, but I'm already. L- there already has been a, an order, and there's some maintenance issues and stuff. And what's your answer to that? Okay, now, now by by first hearing, you mean it was just like it, it was the initial hearing period, the first time you'd even been. Well, it was yeah, and I never attended. Okay, um, yeah, I, I would I would say you should have no problem going back and, and fixing that. I mean, one of the things that uh, that we did with, uh, uh, except my brother actually did show up for the first hearing just to say that he he had just received the the the, uh, the the claim being made against him. Uh-huh. And he hadn't had time to review it yet, which he hadn't. It had only been like seven days. Uh, he he just got served seven days beforehand. So, and it was one of those situations where the judge started yelling at him and saying, "No, you you know, uh, I'm going to remand for three weeks. But when we get back here, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going for a blood test. You're going to pay for it." And the and the judge was already just you know being a bit of a dick to him. And so I'm, he he told me all about it. Uh, and he told the judge, he goes, "Well, I need time to get my counterclaim together." And the judge said, "This is family court. You don't file counterclaims here, and you do whatever I tell you to do, kind of stuff." So that was when we I generated the uh, the document that we called a. I've got it right here in front of me. It was um, a sec here. Uh, I've got that. Yeah, I do have it right here. Okay. It was it was an interesting one. I just I wanted to see what would happen with it. So we filed this into the court, and it was a it was an affidavit. And it was a uh, notice of injury, notice of fraud and conversion, and then unlawful. Uh, no, nope, not sorry, that's the most recent one. My bad. It was a notice of injury. It was an affidavit, and it was a motion to quash. That's what it was. So yeah, okay. what he did in the affidavit, though, and it was about a 20-point affidavit, was he removed any presumption of consent for the state to arbitrate in a private dispute. Absolutely. That's no. That's the area that I'm going on. Precisely. Um, and that's what I assumed happened, you know, in, in the case. Um, but my, uh, I, I just, I know that you can always go back, and I know that uh, if you're claiming to be, you know, the the executor, the occupant of executor of your own estate, administrator, yeah, whatever you want. The administrator, the administrator. If if you're claiming that, then all, you know the jurisdiction is basically pulled right out from the whole situation. Even and I, I what I want to do is what I want to do is prepare an affidavit inclusive of everything. Yes. imaginable in the affidavit. Well, ke- Pre- keep it to the point, though. Don't uh, See, people want no. to go overboard with affidavit. You want to keep it to the point, and you just want to go to the extent that you've made it quite clear that you're removing consent to independent arbitration from, from, from the court. Say, no, no, say that this is a private dispute that can be settled privately. There, there's been no attempt by the other party to even, to even try to negotiate this matter. Right, and going straight to court is tax fraud. If, if the two parties have not tried to exhaust their administrative remedies, yeah, yeah. So I got, I got one more. I got one more layer to this. I, I sent a, like you too. I went through the whole no, new core and and so forth. I went through that process of learning and so forth and common law and whatnot, and. I prepared a uh, notice of understanding and intent and claim of right, and I sent it to my ex-wife. Yep. And I sent <clears throat> uh, my understanding of everything all listed out. I also sent a okay notice extension, and I also finally sent the uh, notice of default that Great. she didn't respond to. Great. Now, why can't that document be used in court? It can be. What you have to do is, when you're going to go into court, uh, you're going to you're going to have to you're going to want to put filings into the courthouse. You're going to want to file some motions before the court, and then if you and right. so along with your affidavit, your affidavit uh-huh. saying that we already my, me and my ex-wife, whoever she is, we already have a, an existing agreement. 
I'm not allowing yes. this court to interfere in that agreement. This exactly. is 